On day one, I spawned in as a baby lion. In front of me was my fierce father, the almighty fire lion. Son, we are in big trouble. I looked around and noticed that we were inside of a caged entry. Dad, where are we? Just then, the cage slowly opened. We walked out only to see we were inside of a large gladiator arena with a huge crowd watching over us. The Fire Lion. Welcome. You have something that I want, something that I need, and I, Invictus, will take it! Just then, I noticed a fire amulet that was tied around my father's neck. Without hesitation, my father took the amulet off and threw it over to me. This caused both of us to transform. I was now a baby fire lion with five fire hearts, and my dad was just a regular lion? Dad, what just happened? Son, this amulet grants the holder the essence of the flame. You must protect it with your life. Invictus saw this and started to charge forward. Escape now. I'll hold him off. No, dad. But before I could finish my sentence, my dad ran forward and started to fight off Invictus. His attacks were very strong. And with one ground slam, he took out my dad. No! I knew that I had to run. But as I was, I accidentally ran over wooden trap doors that burnt away. Ah! He must not get away! On day two, I fell down a dark, scary hole. Ah! I heard heavy breathing throughout it and knew that I wasn't alone. Uh, who's there? Just then, a monster slowly emerged from the shadows. Oh no. It charged in and started to attack me. Ah! Thankfully, since it had long legs, I was able to temporarily hide underneath it, confusing it. Think. Come on think. Just then, I noticed a passageway in the room. I guess that's my only option. I ran through it, re-alerting the beast. It was chasing behind me, catching up by the second. Oh no, it's a dead end. I turned around and watched as the monster slowly made its way towards me. I'm done for. As I was losing all of my hope, a brave magma giraffe emerged from the lava pool. Uh, who are you? No time. Come with me now. You want me to jump in the lava? Oh no, here goes nothing. I jumped inside and to my surprise, I wasn't dying. Sweet. Now, follow me. You have a lot to learn. The magma giraffe and I emerged from the lava outside. I looked around and noticed that we were inside of a nethery looking Sahara. Whoa. I also noticed my fire hearts were low and I was so hungry. Yeah, take this. The giraffe threw me over some fire fruits. I ate them, which caused my health to instantly heal. Whoa, fire heals me now. Correct, Fozo. With that amulet you hold around your neck, you have no idea how strong you can get. My name's Jenga. I used to be best friends with your father. So you're saying I can become stronger, but how? Oh, young one. Why tell you when I can show you? Follow me. On day four, I was brought over to a cliffside. I looked down the valley and can see it held a gravesite of some sorts. What is this place? Just then, I was punched down by Jenga. Ah, what the heck? I heard growling and coyotes emerged from behind the tombstones. Oh, is this a little snack we see? Uh, let me back up, uh, please. These coyotes are not welcome here. Fight them. Use the amulet. The coyotes charged in and started to attack me. I slashed at them using more energy than I ever had, which caused fire to emerge from my paws. Whoa, I have a fire slash? I kept using it, which caused the coyotes to flee from the gravesite. We will be back. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Because of my victory, a large rumble surrounded the area. What's happening? A fire jaguar spirit then emerged from the largest tombstone there. Who are you? You have brought peace to my grave. And for that, I owe you this. My amulet on my body began to transform. 
arm. I was able to grow out my very own lion mane. I gained five more hearts and also noticed I had a new ability. I wonder what this could do. Thank you, Pozo. So every time my amulet upgrades, so do I? Precisely, Fozo. This jaguar spirit was the first of five animal spirits that guard the savannah. Each one you help will make your fire amulet stronger. Then I will do whatever I can to help all five so that I can be strong enough to take down that gladiator. Where do I begin? On day five, Jenga and I made our way back to the nether hill. I think this is the perfect place for our new animal kingdom. I went out and gathered enough materials to make myself a set of stone tools. From there, I built up a nice fire-themed lion den. While I was doing this, Jenga built himself a long house. I have a long neck, Fozo. Hey, I'm not judging. From there, I designated an area for each spirit I set to rest. The jaguar one is done. Now, four more to go. I wonder what type of spirits the next ones are. If your father was still here, he'd be so proud of you. He believed that as the holder of that amulet, it brought the responsibility of protecting this climate and all the animals within it. Well, I'll make sure that his belief lives on. <laughs> what was that? I ran over only to see a small baby zebra being chased by a couple of the gladiator's men. Oh no, I have to help. On day six, I chased after the gladiators. Jeez, these guys are fast. They were able to corner the little baby zebra into a dead end. Please don't hurt me. <laughs> Shut up. No, I rushed in and jumped in between the both of them. Stay back. The gladiators were all surprised to see me and began to attack me. They had strong swords made out of a rare metal, which did a lot of damage. I knew that I had to fight back. I guess it's time to test out my new ability. I used it, which shot out fire blasts wherever I aimed. Awesome. The two gladiators were tough, but thanks to my new upgrade, they didn't stand a chance. That takes care of them. You didn't have to help me, but you did. Of course. Those men and their leader are pure evil. Anything to help out another animal. They are evil. They captured my parents and were trying to capture me too. I miss them so much. I can tell how sad my new zebra friend was. Do you know where they took them? Of course. It's not too far from here. My name is Stripe. Nice to meet you, Stripe. Now, show me the way. Let's set your family free. On day seven, Stripe brought me over to a gladiator outpost. I noticed a cage there that was full of zebras. Look, Stripe, your family. Oh no, they don't look so good. Stay here. I went ahead and snuck forward. I noticed there were lots of men on guard here. There was no way I can take all these guys at once. You think Invictus is going to enjoy our catch? Maybe. It's not the fire lion, but who cares? The show must go on. The show? What show? I then noticed nearby trees and had an idea. I snuck my way through and used my fire slash to set the trees on fire. I then ran away and watched. Come on, spread. The fire all began to spread, which alerted the guards. Fire, we need to put it out before it spreads to the camp. All of the men then left and I knew I had a short window. I rushed over to the zebras who were all surprised to see me. Fire lion? Now's not the time. Let's go. I set them free and we all left together back to Stripe. Son! Mom! Thank you, Fozo. This means a lot. Of course. I've heard about you and know of your quest. You seek the five spirits of the fire amulet. Yeah, I am looking for the second one. Well, young one, I know exactly where you can find it. On day eight, I sent the zebras off towards my base and was on my way towards the second fire spirit, the scorpion. I just hope he's friendly. I followed the zebra's directions until I found an entryway into a sacred tomb of some sorts. Okay, scary. I made my way through, trying not to set off 
any traps. After a long trek, I finally reached an ancient tomb site. Inside, it held an intimidating scorpion statue. Yep. I'm in the right place. Um, hello, fire scorpion, sir? Just then, a fire scorpion emerged from the statue. Is that a fire lion? Ah, I see you are the holder of the fire amulet. That's right. It was gifted to me from my father, and I need it to stop an evil that is hurting us animals. As a spirit, I have found it hard to be brought peace. No one deems worthy enough to be the true protector of the savannah until we find him or her. I shall not rest. Well, that person is me. What do I have to do to prove it? The scorpion then leapt forward and stung me with his poison. Ah! I started to feel extremely dizzy. Why? You think you're worthy? Prove it. That poison running inside of you is deadly and will make you hallucinate. You must fight it. And if you lose, you die. My vision became blurry and my head started to drift into the sky. On days 9 to 10, I found myself inside of... Wait, where am I? Is this the afterlife? I then looked up and saw the fire scorpion appear in the sky above me. But now, he was ginormous. What happened? This is the land of your hallucination. It's time to tell if you really have what it takes to be the animal's protector. Just then, poison viruses appeared and rushed towards me. So I have to fight the poison? Literally? They all left and tried to suck on my face. Ah, uh, stay away, uh, stay away. I tried my best to dodge them. Every time they would hit me, the more and more weak I started to feel. If your father was still here, he'd be so proud of you. I can't give up. Not now. I fought back, fighting through the poison. I slashed through them and even shot them with my fire shot. They were strong, but I knew if I was going to be the protector, I had to be stronger. I shot one last time and took down the last one. I did it. Well done, lion. Well done. On days 11 to 12, I awoke back inside of the tomb room. I noticed that I had upgraded. I gained five more hearts and was now a full-sized fire lion. Because of this, I had a new ability that allowed me to walk on top of lava. This is awesome! With my fire passed on to you, I have trusted you to keep the animals of this world safe. Is that understood? Yes, I understand, sir. Good. Now go on. Make me proud, Fozo. The fire scorpion then vanished and was put to sleep forever. I promise you won't regret helping me. I headed out of the tomb, and on the way out, I was able to find some iron ore. I mined it and crafted myself a set of iron tools and armor. I was on my way back to base when I ran into a large gladiator arena that was in the process of being built. It was surrounded by a lava moat, and right in the center of it was Invictus himself. On days 13 to 14, I decided to take a closer look and figure out what exactly Invictus was doing. You let Fozo destroy our camp? How stupid do you men have to be? But, 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 but sir, uh, we- Silence! We must kill that beast so that I can possess the amulet. Don't come back empty-handed. The men all nodded and left immediately. I would hate to be on his bad side. Oh, wait, I am. Invictus then looked up at a statue. Who is that? After this, father, you will have no reason not to be happy with me. I will get that amulet, and I will be the strongest gladiator to ever exist. I will put on a show. So he wants my amulet just to put on a show? To what? Hurt us animals? What a jerk! I couldn't disguise my anger any longer and drew Invictus's attention. Oh no. You? Me. I won't let you escape again. I won't! Invictus charged at me and I knew that I had to run. I tried, but he was just too fast. 
he hit me once with his spear and I was already down to one heart. How strong is this guy? I tried to escape the arena, but was quickly cut off at the lava moat by Invictus. I thought I was done for. That's when an idea sparked. Using my newest upgrade, I was able to sprint across the moat. I turned around, filled with fear. Oh, you are scared. I can sense it. <laughs> I'll be right there when you least expect it. The clock is ticking. I have to run. I have to get far away from here. Now. On days 15 to 18, I barely made it back to base. I felt my heart beating fast. I could have died. Bozo! There you are. Are you all right? I am now, Jenga. I am now. I turned and saw Stripe and his family at our base. They didn't have homes yet. I went over and made them some that I thought would best suit them. Hopefully now they can feel like they have a safe place to live. How do you guys like it? Like it? We love it. It's good to see that you've gotten stronger too. Yeah, thanks to you guys. I looked over and saw Stripe's family building a farm next to their home. Us zebras love farming. We promise we will keep this place nice and fed. Awesome. I went and added my second pillar and done. Two down, three more to go. Jenga then walked over to check on me. While you were out on your journey, you'll be happy to know that I found out about the third spirit you need to go out and find, otherwise known as the fire crocodile. Fire crocodile? So what, does he swim in lava lakes? Probably, I don't know. Nearby, there's a swamp known as the Ashen Vines. Find that place and you might just find the crocodile. On days 19 to 22, I made my way towards the Ashen Vines. It didn't take long for me to realize I was headed in the right direction. All the grass and the terrain slowly but surely was turning into ash. That is when I saw a lava lake surrounded by fiery swamp trees. In the middle of it lied a magma hillside holding a tomb. Is this it? Is this where the fire crocodile resides? Why, yes, it is. A crocodile appeared, hovering over its tomb. Hello, um, I have come here for... I am aware why you are here. Even dead, I can still see the amulet that rests upon you. You wish to set me to rest. That's right. I need to. Not just for me, but a lot of animals are being hurt. My family, they have all passed down a sacred jewel. One that I have lost in my lifetime. I know that I can't truly rest without it. I can go find it for you. Let me help. If you wish to, know that it resides where you are your weakest, deep within the water of a dangerous river not far from here. If you find my jewel, you shall put me to rest. The fire crocodile then vanished. Okay, before I find a jewel, I'm gonna have to find out how I can survive underwater as a fire lion. How hard can it be? On days 23 to 26, I made my way to a large river. Maybe water won't hurt me that bad. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Ah, never mind. Well, great. How am I supposed to swim underwater if I can't even touch it? Just then, a water strider approached me. Hey, bud, looks like you've gotten yourself in quite the predicament, huh? What if I told you I can help you out here? You can? How? Whoa, whoa, slow down, okay? It just so happens that I'm in a little predicament myself. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. Why would I scratch your back? I, I it's, it's just a saying, genius. Oh my goodness, follow me. I followed the strider over to a coastal camp. What is this? This was my vacation home, but that bird right there is always flying around, causing me issues and attacking me. I'm just trying to get tanned, man, and I'll help you with your water problem. Deal. I walked over. Maybe I can try to reason with it. It then spotted me and attacked on sight. Ah, okay, never mind. It would fly through the air and shoot me with beams through its beak. 
I fought back by shooting my fire blast at it. I can tell that the beast was hurting. With one more shot, the bird went flying away. Yeah, and stay out. Bravo, pal. Here, eat this. The strider threw me over a water fungus. You want me to eat it? Just do it, all right? Stop being a crybaby. Okay, okay. I did as the strider told me to. And once I ate it, a water aura was sent throughout my body. Awesome. On days 27 to 29, I jumped inside of the river and now didn't take any damage. Better hurry quick, pal. The effect is only temporary. I listened to the strider and started to swim down deep below the river. Come on, where can this jewel be? I swam and swam until I saw gold shimmering deep below. Perfect. I went down and managed to find an underwater treasure room in the middle of it lied the gem. I was about to grab it when a giant underwater rock fell in the way. My treasure. What? But that gem, it doesn't belong to you. Me no care. The straddler charged in and started to attack me. Hey, wait. It didn't care though and started to throw rocks at me under the water. Ouch. We kept fighting back and forth, but I soon realized it was pointless. Stop it. There has to be some way I can get the gem, can't there be? No, treasure only thing that keep me company. Strad has no friends. Well, what if I can change that? I can tell the rock beast was intrigued. Um, give me one second. I went out and found the water strider from earlier. What do you want, huh? You will be perfect. I brought him back and introduced them to each other. No, Fred. Yeah, yeah, buddy, calm down. The rock beast was happy, and because of it, he allowed me to take the gem. Thanks. No, oh, thank you. Come on, bud. Let's go tan together. On days 30 to 32, I made it back to the lava lake and heard a whisper through the air. Let the lake consume it. I threw the gem inside of it, which caused a huge burst of lava. Whoa! I then felt my body changing. I gained five hearts and felt so much stronger than I ever had. I now had fire aligned over my body and two saber-toothed tusks. Because I was stronger, I had a new flame attack ability. Awesome! On days 33 to 35, I returned back home to base. I looked around at all of my animal friends and saw everyone was making themselves at home. The zebras were farming and supplying all of us with food while Jenga was planning for our next mission. Knowing I would keep growing stronger and stronger, I decided to upgrade my den to serve as a symbol for all animals who are in need. I also went over and added my third pillar. Once all five are done, those gladiators will know not to mess with me. Bozo, there you are. We had trouble nearby here a day or two ago. You did? Yep. Those coyotes are out on patrol. They want to find you and take revenge for kicking them out of their gravesite. Thankfully, they didn't find our home. Don't worry, Jenga. I'll find them and handle this. Just as I finished my sentence, I noticed a new set of smoke coming from the distance. Could that be the coyotes? On days 36 to 38, I followed the smoke, hoping to find a coyote camp. Then, a couple of snakes slithered by me. Whoa! Run away! Those evil men! Our home is destroyed! What are you talking about? The snakes didn't listen, though, and kept slithering out. I entered the desert, and there waiting for me was a large gladiator mining site. Countless gladiators were there, mining away, stripping the desert of all its resources. Oh no, poor desert animals. Yes, with these resources, our arena shall be built up in no time. Invictus, he's here. And you, my number two. I am now entrusting you to go out and find the Fire Lion. I need that amulet. Sir, yes, sir. I must focus on this arena. Do not let me down. Invictus left 
Great. Now I have more people looking for me. I was about to leave until I saw the coyotes running from the desert. Oh no, they're gonna get themselves hurt. Hey dude, so we just heard your whole conversation with your boss guy here and we wanna join you. That fire lion is a pain. Pathetic animals. You really think we would need your help? Mars started to walk towards them and I can tell they were scared. But we can help. We are hunters and- Silence! The number two then sliced his sword and took out two of the coyotes. Oh my goodness. No! You, you monster! Take this one to the prison area. We need extras for Invictus's show. On days 39 to 42, I knew that I couldn't just let the last coyote die. While they were stubborn, they were still animals. I snuck through the mining operation, trying to perfectly time the gladiators mining. I went deep inside an underground prison area, and after a bit of searching, I was able to find the last coyote trapped inside of a cell. My friends, my dear friends. Hey, I'm here to get you out. Ah, you! Are you gonna hurt me? What? No. I then opened his cage and let him out. Look, no animal deserves what happened to you. I'm sorry for your loss. Those gladiators? They're pure evil. They don't care about anything besides themselves. Why do you think I'm trying to take them down? Yeah, I'm sorry. I see that now. I may actually know a way I can help you out. Really? That's great. But first, let's get out of here. The coyote agreed. And together, we both were able to escape the operation site. Now, far off in the distance, he seemed excited to tell me about... One of the fire spirits. I know where you can find him. Oh, yeah? Where is that? He is known as the fire vulture. And I know exactly where he resides. On days 43 to 45, my new friend brought me to one of the coldest biomes I had ever stepped foot in. I looked around. Everything looked so... Dead? Well, that's because everything is. Follow me, you scary beast. I followed the rude coyote until we reached a gravesite. The vulture is here? Not exactly. But the entryway is... Entryway to where? He then brought me over to a headstone that was much larger than the rest. You're fired. You need to use it. Okay. I shot my fire out, which caused an entryway to appear. Awesome. All right. You're on your own now. Good luck, lion. He left. Why did he seem so scared? I went down until I reached a dead looking catacomb. In the center of it lied what looked to be an orb of some sorts. Okay. I went over and touched it, which caused the entire room to shake. Oh no, what's happening? Before I knew it, everything turned white. On days 46 to 47, my vision came back to me. Ah, where am I? I looked around and saw nothing but black and a large, vast gravesite. This is what awaits in the future. I turned, only to see the fire vulture sitting on a ledge above, staring down at me. You are giant. Did you say future? In front of you potentially lies all animals that reside in the savanna, the desert, you name it. If the gladiator wins, this will become reality. Wait, so you know about the gladiator? Of course. As a vulture, I am the eyes and ears of what resides in the living world. It is my job. And I know yours is to set me to peace. I have to. It's the only way I can stop Evictus. I shall help you if you save my son's spirit. It has been trapped deep within an ancient temple in the land of the dead. I'm sorry. Did you say land of the dead? But I'm alive. And I shall not be set to peace while my son is trapped in a prison forever. Save my son and I shall give you the essence of my fire. You've got yourself a deal. Where is this temple? 
On days 48 to 50, I left the vision and went off to search for the land of the dead. It doesn't sound too creepy, does it? I was making my way through a lush forest until I was met with an opening. The vulture told me my way to the temple was this way, but it just led me to a train station? What the? I watched as ghosts got on board and there was a ghost conductor. One way ticket to d -d 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 Dead Central. Let's go, people. Hurry it up. Hurry it up. Um, excuse me. Does this lead to the land of the dead? Why, y y yes, it d -d does. Ticket, please. Ticket? No, I don't have a ticket, but I really need to. No ticket, no passage. Now stop wasting my life away. Oh, wait, I don't have one. I quickly realized that all these ghosts were cold. We have no body heat. And these stupid soul flames don't heat us up at all. I can help you with that. I went around the train and used my fire abilities to change the soul flames into regular ones. I can tell that all of the ghosts now were happier. My goodness, heat. This feels amazing. You know what, lion? You can ride with us. You earned it. On days 51 to 53, the train stopped inside of a dead looking area. Is this? Yep, the land of the dead. Enjoy! The conductor quickly went back inside of the train. Great, I'm here. I walked throughout the land until I was met with a very large black temple. This has to be it, the Temple of the Abyss. I walked inside and found a large warm lit room that had an ancient tomb lying in the middle of it. Just then, a small soul vulture appeared outside of it. Please help me. This is the soul. I went over to try to open the closed tomb, but was quickly interrupted by a large bite. Ah! I turned, only to be face to face with a deadly guardian. Literally. Uh, stay back. The guardian didn't listen and started to attack me. It had a massive mouth and kept trying to bite me whole. The death shall consume you. Ooh, stay away from me. I used everything I had on the deadly guardian, but nothing was working. Does fire not hurt your skin? That's when an idea sparked. Don't aim for his skin. I perfectly waited for the guardian to open its mouth again. And once it did, I shot fire directly inside of it, which defeated the monster for good. Sweet. I went over to the tomb and mined open a hole, which released the fire vulture's son. Thank you, lion. My soul can finally be released. He flew off, and a sense of pride filled within me. You did it, Fozo. You did it. On days 54 to 56, I was summoned back to the fire vulture's realm. Whoa, you can just do that? I can when you've impressed me, Fozo. Well done. I then started to float up high, and in a flash, I upgraded. I gained five more hearts and felt my body's strength increase heavily. I got a new ability, which allowed me to summon fire souls to aid me in combat. Sweet! I've never felt so strong before in my life. On days 57 to 63, I went home and saw that the coyote was there, scaring Stripe. Hey! Boo! Ah! Stay away from me! <laughs> this is great! Can you cut it out? Uh, sorry. Don't worry, Stripe. He won't hurt you. I went over to a new spot of our base and made our new coyote friend a home to stay in. It's not a grave site, but it'll do. Thanks. You know, as a coyote, I am skilled at hunting. I'll be sure to gather meat for our base as a food supply. Thanks. Hopefully now you can finally feel like you belong somewhere. After that, I went ahead and built up our fourth pillar. I just need one more to go, and then we're ready. I then looked over and saw Jenga aiding to a kangaroo. Hey, what's going on? The kangaroos, they've been attacked. Oi, the rest of my people, those gladiators, they took down our entire outpost in search of the fire kangaroo's spirit. They are the real animals. It's okay. If you are strong enough to, why don't you show me where your outpost is? I think it's time I show them to stop messing with us animals.
On day 64 to 68, the kangaroo was able to bring me to its kangaroo outpost. Instead of them being free though, running their empire, they were all stuck inside of cages. That's right, everyone. Round them all up. We need to see if they know where that stupid fire kangaroo is. Should lead us right to the fire lion. He's hurting them because of me? This filled me with so much rage. Please, sir, uh, let us go. Silence. The second in command then hit the kangaroo with his sword, which greatly wounded him. I will get what information I can from you. And once done, you will be thrown into the dungeons forever. Not if I have anything to say about it. No, wait. I didn't listen, though, and ran to the camp fully exposing my location. Small gladiators noticed and started to charge in towards me. Their swords hurt quite a bit, but thanks to my new upgrades, I was able to take them down in groups. I am much stronger now. The last bunch pushed me, but I took them out with ease. Oh, wow. <laughs> we finally meet, Fire Lion. Yeah, we do. I've seen what you've been doing, and it's wrong. All of it is. Us animals, we have emotions too. You think I care? All I care about is making Invictus happy. And that will only happen when I take what is around your precious neck. And I will not let him down. I'm sorry to tell you this, but that's not going to happen. So be it. On day 69 to 71, the gladiator rushed towards me. He swung his massive sword, which did lots of damage. Thanks to my new upgrade, though, I was able to stand a chance. I shot him with everything that I had and used my new fire souls to aid me as well. <laughs> you think this hurts? You are weak. He kept attacking and attacking and attacking. Ouch! His sword is so strong. I tried using my new attacks to my advantage, even trying to ground slam him. But he was just far too fast for me. I was in a losing battle. He hit me one last time, and I knew I was close to being done for. Oh, poor, poor lion. You really thought you stood a chance, didn't you? How naive of you. I looked and saw that I still had one last fire soul left. He flew off, and for some reason, I knew exactly what he was planning. I watched far off as my fire soul aimed and hit the kangaroo's cage head on, letting them out. Oi, thanks! The gladiator was too distracted to notice, though. Just remember, you are a stupid animal, and you never amounted to anything to begin with! You will die here now, alone. He's not alone. I looked over and saw all of the kangaroos standing there in front of the gladiator. How did you escape? Charge! The kangaroos and I collectively fought him off. It was a losing fight before, but now with the power of these animals by my side, we were winning. I used my fire blast on him one last time, which defeated him. Take that. Oi, thank you so much for saving us, sir. That evil man, he wanted to know where our fire kangaroo ancestor was. We didn't trust him at all, though. But you do know where he is, don't you? The kangaroo seemed a bit skeptical. Look, I know you couldn't trust him, but you can trust me. I promise. Oh, you're right. Go north of here and find Kangaroo Rock Mountain. He resides there. On day 72 to 74, I ventured out north. After a short period, I was able to find a mountain much different than the ones I've seen before. This one had a stone kangaroo head carved out of the side. Welp, here I am, Kangaroo Rock Mountain. As I got closer, I began to hear whispers coming from the stone's mouth. Could it be? I climbed up and reached the monument. Once inside of its mouth, I knew my suspicions were correct. Come to put the final fire spirit to rest, have you? Yes, I have. And I have a feeling you already know why. Correct. The tricky thing is, I want to rest, Lion, more than anything. But for some reason, my heart doesn't want it. Do you know why that is? Do you think there's something stopping you? Why, yes. 
It's the fire essence that lives within me. It's stopping me from eternal rest. And I wish for your help. What? Do you want me to remove the fire from within you? I mean, that just sounds crazy. Nothing in this world is too crazy. I will show you that now. Just then, I felt a huge surge of firepower connect between the fire kangaroo and myself. Ah! ah! I looked around and was now who knows where. You are within my heart, Fozo. I looked off in the distance and saw a fire wisp and watched as it flew off quickly. Go, catch the fire essence wisp. Once done, you will have successfully taken the fire essence from within me, allowing me to rest. Good luck, Fozo. On day 75 to 77, I was running throughout the field trying to find the fire wisp. Come on, why is it so fast? Every time I would spot it, it would just fly off again. This is so frustrating. I have to stun it. I waited for the wisp to stop moving around and knew I had one shot to hit him correctly. Come on, please work. I shot out my fire shot and hit it down to the floor. While stunned, I ran over and was about to pick it up. Suddenly, the entire area began to shake. What's happening? The fire wisp I was about to catch then grew larger and larger and larger. The monster now! Oh no. On day 78 to 80, the now monstrous fire wisp began to attack me. Its fiery attacks were very strong. It used its flying ability to its advantage and would fly up to shoot me from above. I did my best and kept trying to fight back. I fought back harder than I ever had before in my life. I then ground slammed it, which caused it to shrink back down to its normal size. Then I picked it up. Awesome. Just then, I was brought back to Kangaroo Rock Mountain. Did I do it? Yes, well done. It's now up to you. Be the guardian of all. My body began to transform one last time. I gained 10 more hearts and felt my muscles and strength begin to grow. I could now do an insanely powerful fire rush attack. Awesome! I knew that after all of my hard work, I was ready to face Invictus. On days 81 to 85, I was making my way back home when I noticed something horrible. Everything was destroyed? Oh no! I watched as the animals all around were scared for their lives. Ah, finally, the fire lion joins us. The animal's protector. Well, it looks like you weren't here to protect your people from this, were you? You! I was about to charge in, but Invictus signaled me to stop. I would think again. Just then, Jenga crouched out, looking weaker than ever. <coughs> Fojo. My goodness, what did you do? Does it matter? You want him back? Come to the arena and get him! The two of us will be waiting. Tick, talk. Invictus escorted Jenga out, and I knew that I had to save him. I looked around at all of my friends. I'm sorry, guys. I should have been here. It's not your fault. Yeah, that mean gladiator guy is going to pay. You're right. He will. Together, all of us animals went around the base and repaired it back up. I had to make sure that nothing like this could ever happen again. Once the base was fully repaired, I went ahead and built up the final pillar. And done. With all five pillars complete, I knew my base was finished. Because of it, a fiery aura began to shoot out throughout my home, turning everything to white. On days 86 to 90, I looked around, only to see my dad there in front of me. Dad! Oh my goodness! Son, it is so good to see you. The amount of progress you made, I couldn't be more proud. That evil gladiator, he took me from you. He's hurt so many people. I know, son, but I have been there with you every step of the way. If anyone can fight back and take what's rightfully ours, it's you. I sure hope so. Hope so? My dear boy, I know so. 
Just then, my vision was brought back to me. I looked around at all of my animal friends and knew that this had to end. It's time we fight back and take what's rightfully ours. That's right. Oh yeah, baby. The next time you see me, Invictus will be done for. On days 91 to 94, I made my way over to Invictus's arena, and I noticed that it was now fully built. He's putting up a show, all right. I noticed countless gladiators there, holding guard out front. It's the lion, get him! They all charged, and so did I. I went in and started to use everything I had against them. They tried their best with their swords, but at the end of the day, I was just far too strong for them to handle me. After I used my latest fire rush ability, it sent the gladiators running scared. Oh, he's too strong, run! Then suddenly, I heard a voice calling from inside. It's time for the show. Yes, it is. On days 95 to 99, I walked through the corridors, only to see Jenga incredibly weak inside one of the rooms. Jenga! Pozo, my boy, what are you doing here? I'm here to stop this and to save you. I'm afraid there's no saving me, Fozo. I feel so weak. That gladiator, his blade, I tried to fight back, but- No, you can't give up now. We have to get through this together. It's what my dad would have wanted. Your dad would have wanted you to protect these animals. And I, I helped you with that. <sighs> Beat Invictus, Fozo. Beat him for all of us. Jenga? Jenga, no! Jenga was gone. And right after that, the gates in front of me opened, only to see Invictus in the middle of his gladiator arena waiting for me. On day 100, I walked out and was face to face with Invictus. I looked around and saw a huge crowd of gladiators watching us. Yes, Fire Lion. Do you like it? The world's biggest show yet. You are a maniac and you will soon learn to regret everything you have done. Oh, really? Then bring it. Invictus and I both clashed which caused the audience to uproar. He was really fast and used his expertise in sword fighting to his advantage. He would jump and slice his weapon into me, which did a lot of damage. I tried to fight back against him, but most of my hits ended up being blocked by his shield. I tried the best that I could, but could tell that I was losing. No, I can't lose. I can't. It's now up to you. Be the guardian of all. If anyone can fight back and take what's rightfully ours, it's you. Beat Invictus, Fozo. Beat him for all of us. Fight, Fozo. Everyone is counting on you. You can do this. You can do this. I leapt up and slammed a very powerful fire attack, which sent Invictus back. He was clearly stunned, and I used this to my advantage. I did everything I could and everything I had against him. My fire souls, fire shot, you name it. I gave my all and thought about all the animals I was protecting. No, no! With one final powerful fire slam, Invictus was down for the count. With him gone, all animals can be treated with respect.